What's up guys, it's Dave Marshall with the RC Air Marshall YouTube channel and in this video series we're going to help change our RC life by going over all of the different features and functions of the all new Spectrum NX series transmitters. As with all of our videos, everything that you see in the video is available in the links in the description. Uh, those are affiliate links and when you use those it pays a small commission back to the channel and we really appreciate your support. If you like the videos that we're putting out here on the RC Air Marshall YouTube channel be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn your notifications on so you never miss another video. Now let's get to today's tutorial. What's up guys in today's video we're going to be talking about the flap system and all of the options and features that go along with that. So in order to get into the flap system we're simply going to click the scroll wheel down one click uh, which will take us into our function list and there is no flap system. I would normally see the flap system here between digital switch setup and mixing. So where is it? So by default what you're seeing is normal. If you are not seeing flap system and you have flaps set up on your airplane uh, you have to unlock the flap system menu by setting your wing type to a wing type that includes flaps. We're going to go over that real quick. Uh, what you have to do is back out to your main screen, click your scroll wheel, and we're going to go to system setup. Let's click yes. And we're going to go down to aircraft type. That will allow us to set up the different wing types for the aircraft or the model that we're in. So we click that scroll wheel. And here on wing type, we'll just scroll down once to highlight where it says normal. Let's click that. That'll allow us to adjust that setting. And when you're looking at normal wing types, so wing types that have just an aileron servo. So right now this is one aileron servo that's going to control both ailerons. You will not have flap setup available with this wing type selected. So here with dual aileron, you know, one servo for each aileron, you're still not going to have flap system. When you get the flapper on, you will have the flap system menu item available to you. Uh, here where we've got one aileron, one flap, that's going to work. One aileron, two flaps, that will work. Two ailerons, one flap, we're going to have flap system available to us. Any of these wing types that have flaps. Now here on Elevon and Elevon B, you are not going to have uh, flaps available to you and obviously in four aileron setup so like a biplane where you have four independent servos for each aileron control surface you're not going to have flap setup available there either so let's select a wing type that does have flaps so our most typical is going to be one aileron one flap so let's go ahead and select that and now we're going to have flap system available in our main menu so let's go ahead and back out and we'll get back to our main screen. We're going to click that scroll wheel once. And now we'll see right under digital switch setup, we've got flap system available to us. So let's go ahead and select flap system. And that will take us to our flap system menu. So by default, you'll see that we have the switch set up to inhibit. Uh, so the first thing that we want to do is assign a switch that we want to control our flap. So we'll go down here, we'll highlight inhibit, we're going to click that scroll wheel once and that will allow us to select a switch. Now as always we can either go through with the scroll wheel and select the switch that we want to control our flaps or we can simply flip the switch. In this case we want to use switch D. That's my preference. You can use whatever switch you want. When I flip that D switch you'll see that it selects D here and we'll go ahead and click the scroll wheel to lock that selection in. So now we have switch D set up as our flap switch and as soon as we lock that in it unlocks what we can do for each one of the positions for the switch. Typically you'll have three different positions to choose from. If you put it on a two position switch, you're going to have basically flaps up, flaps down. With a three position switch, we can set up flaps up position, takeoff flap position, and a landing flap position. At least that's how I like to refer to them. And as we flip that switch, you'll see the binding box around position zero will change. So right now that box is around position zero. As we move it to position one, you'll see that. And we move it to position two, you'll see that as well. The way I want this set up is I want position zero to be my flaps up, I want position one to be my takeoff flap position, and I want position two 
to be my landing flat position. We're just gonna go a, a very generic setup here. So something to keep in mind when you're setting up your flap servo, the middle position of that flap servo is gonna be the flaps about halfway down. So, you know, when we have our flaps set to negative 100, they're gonna be up or 100, depending on how the servo is situated, right? When we go to zero, when we center that servo, the flaps are gonna go about halfway down. And when we go to either negative 100, we go to the extremes on the other side of that servo, it's gonna bring the flaps all the way down. You want that first flap setting, we're gonna say, so we're gonna go with the negative on the high side, right? So that's gonna bring the flap all the way up. And then position one will be zero. So that's our center position. That's gonna be our takeoff flap position. And then for landing flaps, we want the opposite, right? So we would want the landing flap position to be 100. All right, now down here in the channel monitor for flaps, right? So once you have a wing type that supports flaps, channel six, which is typically aux one, is going to change the name. It's now gonna be called FLP, right? It's gonna be the flap channel. So we can see as we manipulate this switch on the channel monitor, that that's going to change. Now, I know that it shows it down right now, but that's that's all preference, right? So if we wanted to change that, uh, we can go and do the same thing where we can change this to say 100. Percent. And we'll change position two to negative 100. So it makes a little better sense on the monitor as we're uh, you know, kind of showing you how this all works. What we have now is negative 100 is gonna be our landing flat position, our lowest flat position. Position one will center the flaps and position zero will bring the flaps all the way up. So we have flaps up, takeoff flaps, and landing flaps. And you see that changing there in that channel monitor. I don't like my flaps to go instantly, right? So when I have my flaps set to uh, with no speed change, as I change it, and you can see it in the channel monitor as I move that switch, the transition from 100 to zero is instant. And the transition from zero to negative 100 is also instant. You know, if I just go straight back up and depending on the response time of your servo, most servos are pretty quick. So the flaps are just gonna jump, you know, from uh, your landing flap position to your flaps up position, it'd be very quick. So what you want, or what I like personally, is for there to be some delay there. And that's where the speed setting here at the bottom comes in. When we go down to speed, we can change that. So we'll just click that and we can set a delay timer for the flaps or it's not a delay, so the flaps still respond immediately, but there is some, uh, it changes the amount of time it takes to get from one position to the next. So with a two second timer on there, as I flip this switch, so watch that channel monitor. Uh, right now I'm in my landing flap position. As I move it from the landing flap position to the takeoff flap position, you'll see that it's a nice transition it's not instantaneous. So I'm gonna move it to flaps up and you'll see there's a delayed time there to get to the flaps up position. And if I move it from flaps up to landing flaps, it has a nice transitional speed there. So it's more realistic to a scale aircraft where when you set that flap position, it moves nice and slow. So you don't see any kind of odd tendencies in the air, especially in the case that you were to set your flaps with too much airspeed. You'll see a, either a lot of ballooning, you know, where the airplane, like the nose of the airplane will go up, or you'll see the airplane nose down abruptly. I like to have that nice delay there. So whatever the airplane's doing, I can either alter my speed or alter my angle of attack 
to compensate for whatever tendencies the, the airplane's going to have as I start to deploy those flaps. Over here, you're going to see linked. That is a new feature in the latest version of the NX series firmware. Just keep in mind for all of the videos that we're making on the NX series that we're always using the latest version of the NX series software. If you're still on a previous version of the uh, NX series firmware, I'd highly recommend updating it so you can take advantage of some of the features we're going to show in these videos. Right now it's set up on linked. We can highlight that option and we can change that from independent to linked. What that is going to do, if I go down here and I set position one to be a two second transition, when I change from position one to position two, that's going to be an instant change, right? When I go from position two to position one, it's going to take two seconds to get there. When I go from position one to position zero, it's going to be instant. From zero to one is going to be a two second change. So you can see that if I was in independent, I'd have to go through and set up my speeds, my, my timers for each one of those switch transitions. There's some use cases for that, but typically I will leave that on linked. So now all of my positions are set to two seconds and you'll see as I flip through the switch values that they are all following that two second movement speed. That's what you're getting when you click between independent and linked. Now let's go back up here and talk about these elevator percentages. For each position of the flaps, I can set up an elevator mix that goes along with those. Now typically with the flaps up, my elevator mix is going to be 0%. With position 1, so my takeoff flap and my landing flap positions, the airplane will typically have some kind of tendency. It's either going to tend to go nose up or nose down. And you're going to find that with different wing configurations. So a high wing plane, for example, uh, when I put the flaps down, is going to tend to go nose up. On a low wing aircraft, my nose is going to typically start to dive. I'm going to have a nose down attitude when I uh, add more and more flaps. So what this allows us to do is compensate for that by adding an elevator mix to keep the nose level uh, while I deploy the flaps or through the flap cycle. We're going to set up this particular model to suggest that it is a high wing aircraft that's going to have a nose up tendency. So we're going to add a little bit of down elevator to bring that nose back level as the flaps deploy. And we don't need a huge amount here. We want to nose that elevator down a little bit. In this particular case, if I push that stick forward, that's giving us positive values. Now, this is all going to be based on how your servos are set up, whether or not nose down is going to be a positive or a negative value. If you have that reversed, you're going to want to do the opposite of this, right? But we can see right here in the monitor that if I push that stick forward, which would bring my nose down, that I'm getting positive values. For position one, I may want to set up a 5% elevator mix, which is going to add 5% elevator, down elevator, to push that nose back down when the flaps are deployed halfway. All right, we can go ahead and lock that in. And then we'll go to position two, and let's set this one up for a 10% down elevator mix. We're going to move the flaps back to position zero, which is our flaps up position. So now, uh, rather than watching the flap channel, because we already know how that's going to work, what I want you to pay attention to over here is our elevator right because we have added an elevator mix to our takeoff flat position and our landing flat position so we have five percent down elevator in position one and ten percent down elevator in position two right so as we move the flat position from flaps up to takeoff flaps you'll see that we have added a little bit of elevator mix into that. And we move from position one to position two. I should expect to see that number go up a little bit as the flaps go down. And you'll see that they're on the same kind of timer. So if there's two seconds between uh, our takeoff flap and our landing flap position, you'll also see about two seconds of 
response time for the elevator to move from 5 to 10 percent. So let's watch that as we move from position 1 to position 2. And you'll see it slowly move from 5 to 10. And let's go ahead and go back to flaps up. You'll see that slowly move back down to zero because our elevator mix is zero percent with the flaps up. Now, while you're flying the airplane, all of this is going to be very subjective. You know, there is no perfect flap setup for specific airplanes. In fact, in the manual, there's going to be suggested uh, angles, right? So suggested either, either deflection angles or suggested millimeter values, or it could be imperial. It could be set up to inches. And if it is, you just, I always convert those. But you'll want to use some kind of deflection gauge, right? Where we're either measuring the distance between our flaps up and flaps down uh, values or flaps up, takeoff flaps, landing flap values, and just adjusting each one of these values uh, with the switch in that position until we get the flap exactly where we want it in accordance with the manual. And especially if we're working with e-flight airplanes, it will tell us exactly what values to punch in here to the flap system. And the e-flight planes will also give us a suggested elevator mix. Other manufacturers in their manuals, they will suggest, you know, a certain elevator deflection. And what I always do is I'll put like a deflection gauge or something like that on the elevator and move the flap switch into that position. So say in this example, you know, we want to go full flaps down or our landing flap configuration. And I'll go over there and just adjust that mix until, and you'll see here, we can actually see that angle getting adjusted live in the channel monitor. And just adjust it until we get the right deflection angle that's called out in the manual. I always like to start with the manual settings, whatever's in the manual, follow that as my initial guideline. And if that is giving me too much, you know, so say in this example, the flaps make the airplane go up. If I'm giving it too much and the airplane starts to nose down, I'll go in here and adjust these and give myself, say, a little less, uh, you know, so adjust that maybe to 4%, adjust that to 8% where I'm not getting quite as much nose down until you get everything just right. So all of this is very much personal preference and personal observation. Even in the books where everything is called out for you and they tell you exactly what to do, always take those settings with a bit of grain of salt and do the testing for yourself. If everything is perfect, that's great, leave it alone. But if your nose is still coming down a little too much or coming up a little too much, when you have the flaps in their intended positions, you can mess around with that elevator mix to make things just right. All right, guys, that's it for today's tutorial on the NX series transmitters. Uh, again, if you're looking to buy an NX series transmitter, please check our links in the description. Those are affiliate links that pay a small commission back to the channel and we absolutely appreciate your support. And as always, for all the other things that you need to change your RC life, you can always go to rcairmarshall.com where you'll find affiliate links to all of our affiliate partners. If you have any questions on today's video, be sure to leave those down in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer those as soon as I get a chance. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to like, share, subscribe, turn on those notifications, Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next one.